Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to fix your own flat screen TV or computer monitor. Now a lot of people when their TV quits working they just throw it away and go buy another one. But um, the one I'm going to be showing you on uh, demonstrating this on today is a 50 inch and they're about three to four hundred dollars to fix it and this is only a four-year-old TV uh, to fix it's only going to be about thirty dollars and it is a lot easier to do than you think so in this video I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to diagnose what the problem is because there are two main problems there are others but these are the two main and these are the ones that you can fix yourself if you're having one of the other problems then you're going to have to take it to a repairman or just get rid of it and buy a new one like I said, for this demonstration, I've got a 50-inch in on and In just a few moments here, I'll zoom the camera in on it. And I'll show you first how to diagnose um, the problem. Then I'll show you how you take it apart. And then I'll show you how you figure out which one of the, the parts in there is what needs to be replaced. And this is really easy. Most of your uh, new TVs only have between two and four boards. Most of them, it's two, some three, and rarely four. And you'll have a video board, a power supply board, and in a lot of the TVs, the power supply and the backlight driver are all on the same board, but some other models will have a separate board for that, and sometimes they'll have two. There'll be one on each side on the inside and the back of the TV. And this is all easy to get to. Um, just a disclaimer, be careful when you do this. There are capacitors and stuff that will most likely still have a charge. And you could get burned, zapped. Uh, I'm not sure if any of these actually have enough voltage or current to kill you. But disclaimer, be careful. They may. All right, now the first thing is your TV has quit working. So most likely, there's no picture. Well, of course, first thing, make sure everything is connected properly. I'm sure you probably already tried that, but just check. Secondly, does, do you have audio? If you have audio and no picture, the problem is, is most likely the, the backlight driver. And like I said, on some boards, it's combined with the power supply. But that's most likely the problem. Now, what you want to do is, number one, you could just pull the TV off, and then you'll look in the back while it's plugged in, and you should, through the cooling grates, be able to see white light. If you cannot, it probably is the, the backlight driver board. But um, I have ran across one or two models of TVs who actually couldn't see the light even looking in there. Another test, and I would do both of these. Take a flashlight, turn all the lights off in the room, pull your shades, make sure it's as dark as possible, Turn the TV on, um, push, and push the menu button so you bring up white letters because this will be easier to see with the flashlight. And then turn your flashlight on and get up and put it right next to the screen at a slight angle. And You can even touch the screen, just don't push hard and scratch it. And just move around and you should be able to see either the lettering from the menu or if it didn't turn it on, you should be able to see some kind of color and movement from the picture. Once again, if you see that, then it's the, the, uh, the backlight board that's fried, and that needs to be replaced. If your backlight is working, and you can see that through the cooling fins, and there's no picture, and there still might be sound, but there's no picture and there's no sound, it's most likely the video board. Well, the video board, it doesn't go bad as common as the, the backlight board. If the video board on this particular model, I'm going to be showing you here in a minute, this one was about $60 to replace that board, where the, um, the backlight driver board, which is built into the power supply board, that whole entire assembly is only around $20 to $30, depending where you look. Um, I generally get my parts off eBay or Amazon. But All right, now tools you're going to need before I zoom the camera in. You're going to need a screwdriver. Don't use a cordless power driver. Use a hand driver, trust me. And um, it works really good if it's magnetized. If it's not, just take a magnet, rub it a few times. Doesn't have to be very strong. Doesn't have to last. Just it makes it easier to get the screws out. 
Secondly, you're going to need something on some models. Once you take the screws out, the back will come right off. Some of them you need um, to pry on it just a little bit. And I have these things. They're used for taking apart cell phones and tablets to replace screens and work on them. These um, usually will do the trick. Um, try to stay away from the screwdriver. That's a good way to crack the bezel. It goes around the, uh, the edge of the front. That's a really good way to break that. All right, well, let me grab the camera and bring it in closer, and I'll zoom in. I got the TV right below me here, and we'll take it apart, and I'll show you the boards in there. And uh, you're not going to believe how simple this is to do. So I'll catch you back in just a moment. All right, I've got the camera moved in uh, here closer to the workbench. As you can see, this is the, the television right here. This is a 50-inch Vizio, I think they pronounce it, V-I-Z-I-O, Vizio, Vizio, something like that. This one, I do believe, if I remember right, it was acquired from a Walmart store. Because this, this one's actually my dad's TV, so I'm fixing it for him. So he doesn't have to go buy another one, because it is only four years old. But I have fixed um, a number of them over the years, a few of mine and a few of other people's. <coughs> Now, um, what you got to do first is if there's a stand, and you can see there's a thing here, a slot, uh, you got to take the stand off because a lot of the times there's going to be screws behind that as well that you're going to have to take out. And this one here, it had one screw behind the stand, and it had four that held it on, which also held it to the back of the, uh, the casing of the, the television. Then you just look, and there will be... Most commonly, the screws will be around the edge, the outside. Um, on a rare occasion, you might find one or two towards the center. But this one, they were all, <clears throat> all around the edge. And then there was one right here that was near the power plug. And in these holes here, these are for the, the mount to mount it in the entertainment center. So those, of course, you have to take off as well. Now, when I was talking earlier... To look to see if you can see if the backlights work in these cooling grills that's what you look through hopefully you can see that one there's one here and there's another one it's kind of hard to see because it's at an angle here and nope there's none on the bottom these don't need a lot of cooling because they don't really get that hot inside now to save some time i've already took all the screws out so i'm going to remove the top now on this one i had to use the little that little uh, pick thing to get the edges loose because once I took the screws out it also has these little tab latches <coughs> they're not very hard to get off <coughs> hmm. all right now look at this this little board here is the video board and this thing here is the, the power board that powers everything and that's all there is for electronics and the newer TVs I remember when I was a kid, um, first couple TVs we had were, were older used ones we got, and they had two vacuum tubes in them. <clears throat> then over the years, got newer TVs. But I still remember the old ones, the CRT TVs, the big picture tube in them. You'd open them things up, and you could barely get your hand inside there. They were just stuffed full of electronics. And, well, look at how far we've come. That's all there is. So, now, the easiest way to tell which is your power board and which is your video board is, number one, your power board is going to have the plug-in for the wall plug on it. Most likely, if it's not, if it's down here or somewhere else, then just follow the wires because that will go to the power supply board. Now, as you can see, this one has the power that comes out to the video board, and the video board is easy to figure out because it will have your antenna connector, your HDMI plugs, um, your AV plugs, your component plugs, all that, USB plug. <coughs> That's how you figure out which board that is. Now, if there was another one or two boards, like there'd be, if there was another board next to this one, it was smaller, and it had wires that ran from this, and then it had to run off, kind of like you can see right here, they go into the casing. That's your backlight driver board. Um, but like I said, this one, it's combined and built together. And I have been noticing 
on a lot of the newer, most recent TVs, they're starting to stay away from multiple boards and just putting it all on the one. Probably saves a few dollars, I'm guessing, is why they do it. <clears throat> all right. Um, well, all you have to do to get them off, you can see, this one is, looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's one, two, so six or seven. Just Phillips screwdriver <coughs> screws, it holds it down. But when you remove this, you can see there are some capacitors. Take your time, grab it by the edges, lift it off, and then put it on something that is not conductive. Because if it is something conductive and these capacitors are charged, it's going to short them out, it's going to heat it up, and you could start a fire. So, <coughs> Just make sure you don't put it on anything that's going to conduct electricity. With this board, the video board, there's only a couple really small ones. I don't see any chance on the video board of getting a decent electrical shock. The capacitors I'm seeing on here are so small in value that I don't think they would. This board, though, however, has one really good sized one and some smaller medium size so just be careful now for as finding the parts um, just take the model number of the, the TV you have go to eBay or Amazon type in the name the brand name of the television or computer monitor because computer monitors work pretty much in the same way but type in the name the model number and after that just add board B-O-A-R-D and what it'll do is it'll bring you up a listing of boards. And that too will also help you identify which is which if you're not sure. But I think I explained it good enough for you where you'll figure it out. But eBay or Amazon is where I normally get my parts readily available. But there are some websites out there that deal just primarily in television parts. So check that out as well. All right. Um, I think we covered everything we need to for this video, so I would like to thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. I hope you have a great day, and I hope you get your TV fixed and save yourself some money.